All right, welcome back, everyone. Tom Wolf is out with his first nonfiction book in about 15 years. The Kingdom of Speech is a bold argument about language and human evolution. Now, the book seeks to challenge our understanding of Darwinism. And Jeff Glor spoke to the provocative writer in New York. Jeff, good morning. To Marco, good morning. At 85, the white suited Tom Wolf is still stalking big game. But this book is a bit different a history lesson mixed with a return to his roots in journalism, an industry he first upended more than 50 years ago. He stalks his east side New York neighborhood like an immaculate white Persian cat. It doesn't matter what year it is. 1981 with 60 Minutes. 2006 with Sunday Morning. And don't miss out on the Big Apple buttons. Or this summer, you will find Tom Wolfe bedecked in a white suit and blasting out wry, wicked language, aiming to irritate anyone who thinks they're too smart, too rich, or too important. When I opened this, I wondered if Tom Wolfe's famous feistiness may have subsided a little bit over the years. It, it hasn't. Well, I just try to bring truth. <laughs> In his latest book, Wolfe argues speech, not evolution, is responsible for humanity's highest achievements. He skewers the man who introduced evolution to the masses, Charles Darwin, along with famed linguist Noam Chomsky. I came to the conclusion that Darwin, Darwinism, the theory of evolution, is another myth. And it's no use saying that human beings evolved from animals because they're creatures with totally different powers. Uh, if you have the power of speech, that's also the power of memory. It is bold, and I think some would say very dangerous, to say that Darwinism and, and evolution is a myth. Well, I think a lot of people don't agree with me. <laughs> but uh, the problem with uh, Evolution is you have to wait six or seven million years. Uh, it's a little hard to recall. It is not hard to recall Wolf's achievements. He crashed the print party in the 60s with essays and arguments that used bold language to showcase his rigorous reporting, climaxing with the right stuff in 1979. In the mid-80s, he switched to novels, including his most famous, Bonfire of the Vanities. So it was journalism to start. And then it was your first novel at the age of 57. Right. And now it's back a bit to, to what you started with. Exactly. I started working on newspapers uh, as soon as I left uh, school, graduate school, actually. I assumed when I first started working for newspapers, well, I'll be a novelist one day. But I lost total interest in being a novelist because this nonfiction was so exciting. I got a little carried away, and then the next book was <laughs> a novel also. But I'm quite at home coming back to, uh, to nonfiction uh, in the kingdom of speech. At 85, it seems Wolf's only concession to time is the shirt. It's a polo, collar up, on guard, instead of the legendary ties and tall collars. The white suit remains, as does the passion to provoke. Is this the last book? To be honest, I have only five more planned. Uh, <laughs> One is gonna, coming up is on political correctness, which I think is the funniest subject in a long, in a long, long time. Tom wow. Wolf has been taking on political correctness for, for decades now, but yes, um, the book is out today, and, and yeah, he says five more planned. And perhaps will be a response to what I can imagine the reaction to this book to be natural selection and speech are not mutually I, exclusive ideas. I think if you read, right, well, I think if you read this, uh, you know, less as a scientific journal than as a Tom, Tom Wolfe theater. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and for the language and, um, and his bold language, uh, that's helpful. Aside from the book, he's just a fine dresser, isn't he? White suit. Always all has the time. been, always has been. But he did, again, he, he, he abandoned the, the tie and the tall collar and goes with the polo now. Well, welcome yeah, back. Yeah. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. <laughs>